What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 12 times WWE got the Elimination Chamber right by uh, Parts Unknown. Um, elimination Chamber is literally right around the corner. So y'all already know we had to check out some Elimination Chamber related videos. There have been some times where uh, WWE managed to get the Elimination Chamber winner correct and just the overall event and hyping it up and bringing that excitement to it and some of the spots you've seen in elimination chamber were done correctly whether to promote how dominant a wrestler is or maybe you know enhance a storyline that was going into the elimination chamber so we're going to check out the few times they actually got it right with the winners and what went on inside the chamber appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man the Chamber of Horrors, Satan's structure, the box of boxes. So comes time for the Elimination Chamber to once again throw a spanner in the works of WrestleMania. Sometimes that happens accidentally, and sometimes it happens by design. Sometimes WWE nails the Elimination Chamber, making their road to WrestleMania that much more interesting and exciting because of it. It may not happen 100% of the time, and for those examples, may I offer you our list of times WWE got the Elimination Chamber wrong. But in the meantime <laughs> and in between time, let's keep that Royal Rumble positivity going here today. Much like our recent list of times WWE got the Royal Rumble right, this is a list of times WWE's decision making was on point, rather than a list of best chamber performances. Uh -huh. So we'll just have to wait to praise the great Kali some other time. I'm Tevis Taylor from Parts Fun Known, and these are 12 times WWE got the Elimination Chamber right. Number 12, the Shayna Baszler Chamber. Yes. In theory, Shayna Baszler eliminating the entire field of the 2020 Women's Elimination Chamber match was a good idea. In theory, yeah, in communism theory. works in theory. Entering this list in the bottom spot is WWE's attempt at smashing over the new top star of the women's division. I say attempt because when all was said and done, more people were talking about how boring this match was than how dominant Shani Baz actually was. Mm -hmm. As said off the top, WWE had the perfect idea for this match, having the former NXT Women's Champion eliminate the other five competitors. But for as good an idea as this was, execution is important and WWE did not execute this idea well at all. There was way too much time spent standing Standing around waiting uh -huh. for the next pod to open. A problem that could have been easily solved if Shayna had simply entered the match fifth instead of fourth. However, this yeah. is a positive list, and this match does deserve praise for producing a worthy WrestleMania challenger for Becky Lynch. It would have just, you know, been nice if Shayna had like, yeah, I don't know, won that match. Number yeah, and uh, I think that's the I don't think anyone had a problem with her winning. It's just people had a problem with her placement because it kind of got boring. She's She's pretty much KOing people, packing people up one by one, and then you have to wait the next two or a minute or and a half for the other pod to open. Instead, she should have came out last. She should have came out last, maybe had, it should have been like maybe a few competitors in there, and you still could have had her be dominant and just destroy people, pack them up one by one. That's what probably should have happened, or because her going out, and just destroying everybody one by one. You you know, there's a lot of waiting and downtime. But the right decision was made in her winning. It's just, it didn't really amount to nothing because she didn't win the match that I think she should have won against Becky. But you know how that go. You know, you know, you know. 11. Kofi's Paranoia Back in the early days of 2009, a bright-eyed Jamaican named Kofi Kingston was set to receive his first world title opportunity inside the Elimination Chamber. Then a certain no-good bastard oh, named yeah. Edge put a stop to that, scrambling Kofi's brains and taking his spot in the chamber. One year later, Kofi was older, wiser, 100% less Jamaican, and made certain <laughs> that the same thing did not happen again. In probably my favorite part of the 2010 Raw Elimination Chamber match, Kofi makes his entrance, frequently checking his back to make sure he wouldn't get jumped again. It is just such a smart little <laughs> moment. And sure, in the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't mean too much, but it is emblematic of a time when WWE paid a little bit more attention to detail. I'm not sure whether this was a Kofi idea or something he was instructed to do by WWE, but commentary did point it out, and I really don't trust Michael Cole to do his research, so I'm gonna say this was intentional. In case it isn't, it places low on the list, but it places high in my heart. Number 10. That is funny, man. <laughs> hey, is he behind me? Uh -oh. All right, I'm good. <laughs> Fucking edge, man. Just diabolical. <laughs> 
Triple H doesn't save Batista. The build to WrestleMania uh -huh. 21's main event between Evolution running mates Triple H and Batista I is remember one of this. the best stories WWE has ever told. And at New Year's Revolution, we got maybe my favorite moment of this legendary storyline. It was a storyline built up over time with subtlety playing a large role in the animal's emergence as a main event star. So mm -hmm. came the Elimination Chamber for the vacant world title in Puerto Rico with both Triple H and Batista taking part. Batista's goal was clear, help Triple H become world champion again. But when the time came, a white hot stare down took place between the leader and his heavy. Triple yep. H was scared straight by standing opposite Batista. And when Randy Orton hit an RKO on Big Dave, Triple H can be seen clear as day, rising from the corner to make the save, but choosing not, not to. to yeah. It is such a brilliant piece of storytelling. And it just goes to show that sometimes simple and subtle storytelling can have the greatest lasting impact. And that was that was really subtle. Even uh, Randy Orton pointed it out. He's like, see, he could have saved you, but he didn't. And I, I like that. That was what they were cooking with Batista and Triple H at that time. That was some good, that was some good build up and like he said, the subtle nuances, the when you pay attention to certain things, they don't obviously put it in the forefront, but you just got to look. And that's always a, a good moment because he could have saved him, but he did, man. I love when, you know, stipulation matches like this create even more story going out, you know, going into this match is some story being built up and created, leaving the match more stories being built up and created. I, I definitely appreciate that when WWE does that. Number nine, CM Punk's sermon. Again, we recently spoke about CM Punk's famous Royal Rumble sermon, but now it is time for the oft-forgotten sequel. After the swift dismissal of our truth I'm sure you'll win the world title next time, Truth, CM Punk <laughs> took to the mic to antagonize each of his four remaining opponents still locked in their pods. Punk told Undertaker he would make him tap out again, referencing their screw job finish at Breaking Point a few months earlier, <laughs> and Undertaker was none too pleased about it. May have had something to do with being set on fire moments earlier, but used yeah. to say, words cut deep. Eventually, Punk's sermon was cut off by the arrival of Rey Mysterio, but this was once again WWE and CM Punk making the absolute most out of every single moment of Punk's screen time. And anyone who can get the biggest reactions of the match without taking a bump is a genius worker mm -hmm. in my book. Number eight. Rivalries reignited. Much like how WWE likes to start the Royal Rumble match with an Easter egg or a callback, the same applies for the Elimination Chamber. There have been many examples of WWE starting a chamber match with former rivals, and more often than not, it has yielded magical results. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter the era. It doesn't matter the rivalry. The chamber is where enemies found each other. Jericho and Michaels in 03. Jericho yeah. and Benoit in 05. Taker and Batista in 08. Jericho and Michaels again in 08. Yeah. Edge and Mysterio in 2011. Cena and Styles in 2017. Mm -hmm. Brian and Joe in 2019. This is just something that WWE gets right in their Elimination Chamber matches, and it means so, so much. If I'm going to highlight a few of them, the big shoutouts have to go to Taker and Batista and Edge and Mysterio for being the two sets of rivals not only to start their match, but finish their matches while being the best part of their matches as well. Number seven. And, and that's good. Like like I was saying, it's it's always good to have those those stories that you know they got history. They're about to lock up in the in the in the chamber, and it it, it makes that that one on one at that particular time. It makes it that much more exciting and gets you amped up for the rest of the elimination chamber. Just having those. People who have had feuds with each other or whatnot kind of lock up and get the match started. It's always good to have that. The Ballad of Santino Morella. Oh, On the Lord. list of unlikely WWE world title contenders, you have names like Bob Hawley, R-Truth, Eric Bischoff, The Patriot, Zack Ryder, but none of them ever came as close to actually capturing the gold as Santino Morella. The only interesting thing about Elimination <laughs> Chamber 2012 as a whole was the journey of Santino, who had won the last spot in the World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Chamber match by winning a battle royal on SmackDown. Now that sure doesn't sound like praise for a pay-per-view, and truthfully it wasn't a good one, but Santino doing stick in preparation for the biggest match of his career was a chuckle-worthy setup for his actual <laughs> performance in, as they say in Italy, 
the Elimination Chamber. Santino somehow outlasts Big Show, The Great Colleague, Cody Rhodes, and Wade Barrett to go toe to toe with the world champion Daniel Bryan, and in the most ludicrous near fall in Elimination Chamber history, <laughs> nearly pinned him with the Cobra. That's right, the sock puppet nearly ended the great reign of Daniel Bryan. Of course, if that actually had happened, this would be on a completely different list. Yeah. But there's no denying that Santino offering a comedy underdog performance was precisely the best way to go about this otherwise very forgettable match. Number six. I know some people are going to be like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I understand when WWE tries to do the underdog story, like the big underdog story, and a lot of times it does work. Mm, Santino, even though he, he does have his comedic moments, it's just, you know, it really comes down to if you find him funny or not. For example, if you were to put our truth in an elimination chamber this year, the crowd would go crazy for it. I would actually go crazy for it. Not crazy, but I actually would have a problem seeing it only because our truth is quite hilarious. And and I think that's kind of the subjective part. Right now, he's one of the most WWE stars right now. He's hilarious. He's an idiot. They have him acting like an idiot and a goof. And you can't really take him seriously as a champion. But at the same time, no one would trip if he was. <laughs> so it's one of those things where kind of the same with Santino. Does it make sense on paper? Absolutely not. But if he's over it with the comedic gimmick, people will give it a pass. That's that's how it's always been in wrestling. And I think the same thing would apply to our truth Is he if he was in the Elimination Chamber this year, the crowd would go crazy because he's that over. So. The 2008 Raw Chamber Participants. Now this one is personal for me because No Way Out 2008 was the first pay-per-view cycle I ever saw as a fan and it influenced a lot of my opinions about WWE, particularly how you book a field of Elimination Chamber competitors to seem like potential winners. Competing for this shot at the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 24 was Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Jeff Hardy, JBL, and Umaga. Now JBL and Umaga may not have had much of a chance of going on and main eventing WrestleMania, but they played a fun role is the heel tandem with JBL paying off Umaga to make sure he won. But the other four is where this chamber really shines. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have four main event stars that each could have headlined WrestleMania at the time, but they each had their own completely separate beefs with champion Randy Orton from the months leading up to Mania. Triple H lost to Orton in October, HBK lost in November, Jericho in December, and Hardy in January. And I don't think we have seen a chamber since with as many believable main event caliber winners as this one. Number Back. five. Tag that's, team champions, that's a good one right there. and hug. While Isla Dawn and Alba Fire may have placed a retroactive curse on the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship <laughs> that has meant that those who hold it are doomed to be injured, badly booked, or deleted from existence in the case of Aaliyah, the first yeah. night the titles were introduced was the very best night they ever had. As stated off the top, this isn't as much a list of WWE choosing the right winners of these chamber matches, but in this case, there was only one team that would have made fitting first champions for WWE's Beyblade belts, and they were boss <laughs> And the Bailey. I mean, <laughs> Sasha Banks and Bailey. There is a bit of a question to be asked about why the tag titles were introduced in a match that featured zero tags, but otherwise WWE got the Elimination Chamber right at Elimination Chamber 2019. It was already clear WWE was going to struggle to fill out the women's tag division mm -hmm. when they did not have six teams to hand to fill out this match, but of the established teams involved, Sasha Banks and Bailey had the most fan support, they had the most yeah. credibility, and they were simply the best wrestlers present. Their reign may not have amounted to much, but when you watch this show you can't help but feel something when their tears start flowing number four no nah, it was a cool moment it was they were the right people to win but man i'm sure they promised them uh, uh promised them like a, a good title reign and and really gonna push those titles to be something to be taken seriously no they were lied to they were lied to they didn't give a damn about them titles they didn't Sasha and, and Bailey did, but Tom Vince didn't give two Fs about them titles. And honestly, I think they need to retire them. I know they're trying to make them people care about them now, and I can appreciate that. But honestly, I'd rather them just do like a, a mid-card women's championship uh, title, create that, than the women's tag titles. Because uh, it's just, it's, there's some good stuff. It's better than what it was before, but. At the same time, it's it's kind of a hit or miss. I, me personally, I think they should probably get rid of them. That's just my personal opinion on it. 
first one. It can often be difficult to introduce a brand new match type mm -hmm. into the universe. Insert drawing of the Ultimate X match here. And you really need to nail the first one if the match type is going to have a chance of sticking. Insert Max. drawing of the championship scramble here. Thankfully, the Elimination Chamber was not only presented very well as a concept by Eric Bischoff and the WWE video production team, but the first match was as close to perfect as you could expect yes. a match to be when one guy in it nearly crushed his throat. Mm -hmm. Simply put, if this match sucked, you would have a lot more fast lanes in February. Six top Raw wrestlers competed for the world title with Kane, Rob Van Dam, this Booker T, so Chris good. Jericho, and Shawn Michaels, who was wrestling only his second match back from retirement, trying to take the title off of Triple H. Shawn does, capturing his final world title and helping to establish one of the greatest WWE original creations of all time Yes. while wearing poopy brown pants. I'm sorry I can't not mention them. Number three. Not gonna lie to you. That first elimination chamber, chef kiss. JR on commentary when HBK finally won the championship at the coming back, the crowd reaction, the confetti, it was great. And we didn't know what to expect with this. It looked diabolical. Just the structure, the promo package. I love you. I hate you. I can't live without you. That video package alone is just, it gives me goosebumps. Ah, oh, take me back, bro. Take just... Just take me back. Kofi Mania. I mean, this match is almost entirely oh. referred to as Classic. the Kofi Mania Chamber at this point. Yeah. After Kofi Kingston caught fire on SmackDown in the gauntlet match to determine who would enter the chamber last, this match sent him into the fan support stratosphere, and thus, Kofi Mania was born. It would have been so easy for WWE to have Kofi enter this chamber, have a good showing, and then get eliminated third, while the quote-unquote real main eventers finished the match, mm -hmm. but that isn't what happened. Kofi outlasted Randy Orton, Jeff Hart, Party, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe until he was all alone with Brian Danielson and in some of the most heated action in Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber history Kofi nearly beats Brian for the WWE Championship but doesn't. I use no hyperbole when I say that this match had my friends and I on the edge of our seats at home because even though it was just before WrestleMania, WWE caught lightning in a bottle yep. and maybe, just maybe, they would go with everyone's main man Kofi. The decision to not have the title change hands was the right one as yeah. it led to one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all time but I cannot understate the importance of this truly excellent match in getting the story to Mania number two and this was so great fantastic they 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 actually made Kofi who was always a star but he had the ceiling you know he had the ceiling that they weren't going to get him past that tag team division but once people got behind him and the performance he showed in that elimination chamber and them booking him that way that it was clear kofi or bus he kofi mania was running while people wanted to see it and it was a beautiful thing to see because it was organic and it just it's a it's a good an extra good feeling for me because it happened in houston the elimination chamber took place in houston and the houston crowd they showed out, and I appreciate that. I truly, truly appreciate that. And we were able to get one of the greatest WrestleMania moments of all time. So if there's anything we can take from Co uh, Kofi Kingston's title reign is that it, it started before the Elimination Chamber, but it really grew during that match. And the fans wanted, him to, wanted to see him in the main event spot, and they did. It was a beautiful sight to see, man. Two, Sean Costa. This Taker. one's really Most good. Most people too. can see the card for WrestleMania 26 coming from a mile away. With yep. Royal Rumble winner Edge likely to challenge former partner and rival Chris Jericho, and Shawn Michaels actively trying to get a WrestleMania rematch with The Undertaker. But with the World Heavyweight Championship still around the waist of the dead man, going into Elimination Chamber, the question remained as to how WWE would shift their chess pieces mm -hmm. into their necessary positions. Of course, you could just have Chris Jericho beat The Undertaker, but with all these mania plans swirling, it felt like a more creative solution was needed. Enter Shawn Michaels. Yep. Literally, in fact, as Shawn illegally entered the cage at the end of the match, super kicking The Undertaker and allowing his long-hated rival Chris Jericho yep. to win the world title. Was Jericho winning the title a little predictable? Yeah. But how they got there continues to be remembered as one of the key moments in the all-time great story of Shawn Facts. Michaels willing to go to any lengths and ultimately put his career on the line for another shot at ending the undertaker's streak and number one and, and that's why that one that's why it, that's such a classic moment because 
HBK, he he was obsessed with it. It was like he had to find a way to get into the elimination chamber, to go over uh and and find a way to, you know, beat the Undertaker. It, it's like it was a ob obsession and I love that. This was a long story a long uh storytelling right here. Like long term storytelling and the fact that he he didn't just they didn't just open up the cage for him. He broke in, came from under the ring and attacked the Undertaker cost him the championship he's like this is what i want now do i have your attention now and i love the undertakers you know pretty much up in the end he's like all right cool you'll get one more shot but you got to put your career on the line which made it that much more important and impactful because they didn't want to go in there with the same type of stipulation like the same match as sean trying to end the streak no he costs the Undertaker, the, uh, the World Heavy World Heavyweight Championship. So he's like, all right, if you want to fight me again at WrestleMania, you could put your career on the line. The streak versus the career. And even though, in my opinion, I don't think it was as good as their first, like their first iteration, like at WrestleMania 25, the match they had, I think that's just one of the best matches in WrestleMania history. It's hard to top that. But their second, their you know, their second go around was really, really good, and the stakes was that much higher. I still think the first one was better. By you know, it was just it's a classic match, and not by much either, because the second one is fantastic too. So, ah oh man, this this was a uh, a good story build up to that WrestleMania man. One Edge pulls double duty. Oh. One of the all-time great show-long stories WWE right here. has ever told, and the perfect example of Edge's ultimate opportunist character being the most interesting part of WWE at the time. At this point, everyone knows the story here. Edge wrestled the opening chamber match as WWE champion, got eliminated in three minutes, freaked the f out, out backstage, and then decided to give Kofi Kingston a scrambled brain yep. and also PTSD. Yep. Shout out to the me of 10 minutes ago for talking about that bit of awesomeness. That decision got Edge inserted uh -huh. into the World Heavyweight Championship chamber in Kofi's place and saw him walk out as the new world champion. You never see the world title scene shuffled around like this right yeah. before WrestleMania, but No Way Out 2009 was one of those shows that got you thinking that when you watch an elimination chamber anything actually can happen and that's our list make sure of course and you know the thing about edge he's you know elimination chamber has been nice to him if you guys remember when i think john cena uh was going through the elimination chamber um and he had just worn it bloodied up vince mcmahon comes out there and then edge comes out there to cash in on John Cena after he had a grueling elimination chamber and become the WWE champion. I mean, he's he's been pretty successful at these elimination chamber matches, man. Or just uh, um, I don't even think that was elimination chamber pay per view. It's just the match was there at the time when John Cena had won it. But this is just one of those things. Anytime there's elimination chamber, Edge seems to do pretty well, man. But comment down below. Let me know y'all favorite elimination chamber match of all time name what year or whatnot and, and let me know down below what made that match your favorite in your opinion but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still here on the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace